Welcome to this three-part educational series titled, Hot Topics in Asthma, Increasing Control and Preventing Exacerbations. Each episode in the series will be dedicated to one of the following areas. Assessment of asthma control, updates on clinical evidence surrounding the efficacy of rescue therapies for asthma, and recommendations for as-needed asthma rescue therapy. Thank you for joining, and let's get started. I'm Dr. Bradley Chips, the past president of the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, and medical director of Capital Allergy and Respiratory Disease Center in Sacramento, California. Thank you for joining me, and let's get started. First, let's look at the prevalence of asthma and asthma exacerbations. There are 21 million adults and 4 million children with asthma in the U.S. 60% of adults and 44% of children have uncontrolled asthma, and this relates then and predicts 10 million exacerbations of asthma will occur each year. When we look at a pharmacy-based assessment of which patients are at risk for exacerbations, we see again using in both a commercial and Medicaid population, using um, refills and filling of medications as a surrogate for uh, their genus steps, first off with short acting beta agonist, well-controlled patients had a 55% chance of having at least one severe exacerbation, or as you can see, a 2.3% chance of going to the emergency room. And it goes up dramatically in the patients with more than four fills of short acting beta agonist in a year, suggesting they have very poorly controlled asthma with a 56% chance of having severe exacerbation and a 7% chance of going to the emergency room. Using, again, a pharmacy pharmacologic therapy as a surrogate for GINA step care, you can see that no matter at what step with the GINA paradigm uh, medication they were using, they still have between a uh, 42 and 57% chance of having exacerbation and also a significant emergency room visit burden. And also when we qualify and quantify the burden and impact of asthma exacerbations, direct medical costs with uncontrolled asthma in the U.S. are estimated to be $15 billion annually, and the indirect costs may in fact be higher than that. Patients bear the heaviest burdens with respect to exacerbations. They have substantial disease limitations, avoidance of anything potentially leading to a deterioration in their asthma, they have a high burden of their asthma on other family members. Their daily life and uh, social restrictions are present. And sick leaves cause, of course, loss of income. So we evaluate asthma control in the practice. You can see the parameters with persistent symptoms, exacerbations, poor lung function, oral corticosteroid exposure, uh, all then lead to the frequency of rescue inhaler use increasing. Asthma control is often overestimated in practice, both by patients and their healthcare providers. The AIRQ, which is the Asthma Impairment and Risk Questionnaire, is a 10 question yes, no uh, format designed for patients 12 years of age or older. It assesses patients' control, which is the impairment domain, and also predicts their risk of a future exacerbation. In order to evaluate asthma control in your practice, you need to use a validated instrument for asthma control. In the past, we've only had the asthma control test or the ACT. The AIRQ is now available. Well-controlled asthma was predicted by the ACT in 49% of patients versus the AIRQ in 35% of patients. However, 62% of patients rated themselves as well or completely controlled, and 54% of physicians rated them as well or completely controlled. You can see there's a significant disassociation between the validated instrument and what the patients feel about their asthma. Not well controlled asthma, ACT 26%, and the AIRQ 38%. Very poorly controlled asthma, again, by the ACT was 35, 25%, and the AIRQ, 
The AirQ also per, uh, performs significantly better than the ACT in not classifying patients with previous year exacerbations as well controlled. Previous year exacerbations were experienced in 29% assessed as well controlled by the ACT, but only 15% by the AirQ. In my practice, I use the AirQ in patients 12 years of age and older in order to predict their current status of asthma control and their risk of future exacerbations. These two parameters help me better understand whether I can step up or step down their asthma therapy and give them a heads up about their risk of having a future exacerbation. We know that a history of a previous exacerbation in the year before is a major risk factor for a future exacerbation. So we want to understand what the benefits of sustained asthma control are. They are to reduce exacerbations, improvement in performance of daily activities, improvement in quality of life, and, a, and also the potential prevention of disease progression and, re and reversal of the underlying pathophysiologic changes of asthma in the airway. I educate patients about the importance of symptom control and adherence to medication as a very important part of my job as an asthma specialist. Patients tend to view asthma as an episodic disease. That is, when they're having symptoms, they take medicine. When they're not having symptoms, they don't take medicine. At least 60% of asthma exacerbations are at least in part related to poor adherence to their medication regimen. It's important that we continue to encourage patients to take their medications regularly and also to use the uh, AirQ or, or a similar uh, validated instrument for asthma control as a, a, as a marker of their risk for exacerbation and again to help them reinforce the need to use their medication regularly. And also the use of the, the as needed medications that we'll talk about on the, in, in the next uh, section are very important as our understanding and our approach to as needed therapy for asthma is changing dramatically in the last several years and will continue to change in the future. So it's important that we understand that a validated instrument such as the AirQ will again evaluate both current asthma control and risk for future exacerbations. It's important that this tool be used uh, regularly at each, each office visit and discuss with the patient because a not well controlled asthma or very very poorly controlled asthma is definitely a risk factor for exacerbations in the future. Thank you for joining me for this Hot Topics program. You can view other episodes from this series on the landing page. For additional CME opportunities, clinical resources, and links to patient education materials, please visit us at www.exchangecme.com.